Hi everybody! My name's Miss Mary and I'm coming to you from my home in Pineville, North Carolina. My little spot in the woods I call the Near Woods because it's right outside my back door. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about making something out of almost nothing. You've all enjoyed eating corn, I'm sure, and right now the corn is getting ripe in the fields and we are shucking it and usually people would just throw these shucks away but a long time ago people made use of everything my mom says when they butchered a hog they used everything but the squeal so you didn't throw away much of anything you found a use for it and back a long time ago kids didn't go to the store to buy toys they made their own toys. They made up games and played. I'm sure a lot of you have been doing that since you've been at home. So we're going to take these corn shucks and we're going to make some figures out of them. I'm going to show you up close how to make a really simple corn husk figure. Um, at the folk school we do it a little fancier than this, but this is a way you can do it and get started at home and then hopefully you can really soar on your own and make up your own designs and use what I teach you to use your own creativity. And I'll show you some more pictures at the end of the video of some that other boys and girls have made that maybe you can get some ideas from. So I'm going to stop the video and show you up close the materials you'll need. The materials I use for corn husk dolls are very simple. You need some corn husks and obviously you can um, use real fresh out of the field corn husk. You have to let them dry and they tend to curl up a lot so if you can dry them between some um, screen wire or put some paper and a couple of rocks on top of them to weight them down. That's good so they don't curl up as much. You can also get corn shucks or corn husks from the grocery store in the section where they sell uh, supplies for making tacos and tamales. They sell these already dried in a package so you'll need some corn husk. Just one package from the grocery store will make several dolls. You'll need some thin cotton string or some kind of yarn, something to tie with. You'll need um, scissors. You'll need a bowl of water. You'll need a towel or something so you don't get your table wet. And then if you want your doll or your figure to have hair, you'll need some kind of hair. This is wool that I've dyed with Kool-Aid just simple Kool-Aid to make a, a bright yellow color. This is just plain natural wool. You can also use the corn silk from the corn. It makes nice hair. This is a doll that, made, that I made a long time ago and she's got flax hair. It looks, looks uh, really kind of like an angel there. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to make a head first and for the head I took a, a piece of wool and rolled it up into a ball and you know what you have probably at home that will work just as well and even faster is a cotton ball so you can get a cotton ball. I'm going to take a thin shuck and I'm going to wet it down just wet it for just a little bit dip it in the water and then I lay it on the towel to dry a little bit and then I'm going to take that wool or cotton ball and I'm going to wrap it up inside. I just rolled it up in there. Now I'm going to twist that top of the shuck, twist it around, twist it around and pull in and I'm going to tie. Now, if you don't know how to tie a knot, then this is where you could get a grown-up to help you. 
or you could get uh, a, a sister or a brother to help you, but you're going to wrap that string around that corn shuck. And do you see how it forms that little head? The back looks funny because it's got that twist, but we'll cover that up. I'm going to crisscross my two tails to make an X and pull the, the tail through. And I'm going to pull it tight, crisscross it to make another X and pull it through to make it tight. So what I've got now is a head. This one's pretty small because I didn't use much wool. Here's one that I did with a cotton ball. You can see it's a little bigger. And this one's already dry, so I'm going to go ahead and set this wet one to the side and use my dry one. The next thing that we're going to make is a, 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 the arms. And there is a way to make arms that's a little complicated with uh, floral wire. And you can do that later on. Um, we can maybe do a, an advanced corn husk doll making video. But this one we're trying to keep really simple so you can do it at home. So I'm going to take another shuck. I'm going to dip it. Let's push that forward so you can see. Dip it in the water. Get it wet. Shake off the extra water and dry it off a little. And then I'm going to roll this corn husk up. I'm rolling it into a long piece. Can you see that? So it's just a long piece there. I'm going to tie this. And my string is already cut. It's a little long, so I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to tie it on both ends. And this is going to be where the hands are at. So I'm going to add a tie on this end. And then I will add a tie on this end. Do you hear that little Carolina Wren calling? He's chirping. He says, what are you doing out here in my territory? I'm going to come down and tie the opposite end. Those little Carolina wrens have had babies and uh, they've been bringing their babies to the feeder and eating and the other day I had one, I put some seed in my hand and it landed right on my fingertip and ate right out of my hand. Maybe it thinks I've got some now. So there's the arm. Now we're going to set the arm down and I'm going to tie the arms onto the body. Can you see how that's going to turn into arms here? So I lay this down and I get my string. This is so cool how you can make something out of something so simple. I learned to make corn husk dolls when I was in middle school and I've made a lot of them over the years. So I've, I've crisscrossed over underneath there. And I'm crisscrossing and I'm just going to pull it tight and I'm going to tie another knot. Again, if you have trouble tying, get you a tying partner. You need a tying buddy to help you. So I've got that on there. It's a little bit tight, but if it's on the wiggly side, then an easy thing to do is to wrap the string around this way and the other piece around this way and tie it in the back again. That makes a little crisscross part that holds it in place. Got that? It is nice to have a video because if, if you get lost you can replay and go over and uh, stop it and pause it and see where you got stuck at and replay. So that's what I've got to start with. I'm going to stop the video for a minute and uh, get a couple more things that we need and then we'll be right back. So work on your head and your arms. Get that part ready. Alright, 
we're ready now to make the top part of the shirt. And for that, you're going to need four shucks. So pick out one, two, three, four shucks. If they're super wide, you can tear them in half, and that would count as two there, three, four. We'll count that as four. Then you dip them in the water and dry them off a little. And I've already wet these. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the water to get them soaking. These are pretty dry. There we go. So, I'm going to, these are so big, I think I'm going to use one, two, three, four, like that. Now, if you want color, you can use Rit dye to dye the corn husks with. I've tried Kool-Aid, it doesn't work. I've tried um, the cake icing coloring. And that worked a little bit, but the very best thing to use is writ dye. And that's something you would need a grown-up to help you with. But if you want to make a figure like Yoda, you could use green. Um, or if you wanted Darth Vader, you could use black. There's a lot of different colors of writ dye that you can get. So I've got four of these shucks. I'm going to put two together and two together. And then I'm going to kind of make a little sandwich with her. And it's going to look kind of funny at first. It's going to look like she's going, um, she's hiding. So I'm going to lay her down on top of two. And I'm going to lay two over her face. Do you see how she's hidden there? She or he? The head is tucked and buried inside going to take my string and I'm going to tie where I'm going to be tying is right around this neck part but I won't be able to see her face for a while so I'm going to put that string up under there and I'm crisscrossing again making that X and going under and I pull nice and tight Put that on there really good and tight. And then crisscross again and pull. So right now it looks like she's got some wild hair sticking up, doesn't it? <laughs> Strange looking uh, corn husk doll at the moment, but we'll get it. But do you see how it's tied right around? Now what I'm going to do is peel it like a banana. I'm going to pull one shuck down and the other shuck down. And do you see how that made kind of the top of the shirt? So now I'm going to tie again. This is just a real basic corn husk doll. I learned to make them like this. Like I said, when I was in middle school and then I made them for years and years and then I met Miss Millie at the folk school who teaches corn husk dolls and corn husk creativity and we have worked together for a long time and this year she was going to stay home and take a little uh, break and I was going to be her substitute so I am sorry that we couldn't be all together but I want to give a shout out to Miss Millie who is an amazing corn husk maker and storyteller. I wish she was here to tell stories with us today. So there's a start. You could stop right there and have something to play with. If you were little and you didn't have a toy, wouldn't this be fun? But we're going to add some parts to it. So the next part we're going to add is the part that makes the skirts. And if you're making a wizard or something like that, you can use uh, use corn shucks and make a robe, a long robe. There's a way to make legs too. I can show you that another time. So I've got one, two, three, 
four big shucks and I'm going to add a fifth one in just to have a little extra. These shucks are pretty pretty bad looking so I would make sure you choose some that look pretty nice. Put the ones that don't look nice underneath so they don't show. So what I'm going to do now is almost the same thing I did with the head. I'm going to put these on top and I'm going to put an extra one there and I'm going to put these on the bottom. Do you see how I'm laying those on? So everything goes on kind of upside down. Now guess what we're going to do? You're right, tie again. So we're going to add another tie right in here. Get another string and lay it out. Lay it on top. And again, make sure that you tie these knots really tight. So a little secret trick. If you crisscross and make an X and you put the tail under and you pass the tail under a second time, it adds an extra twist in there and that makes it much easier for that string to hold while you pull it tight. So I'm pushing that down close to where the waist will be on the doll. And pull, pull, pull. You can hear it squeak. Make it tight. Crisscross again and put the tail under and pull. There we go. And trim those ends off. Now we're going to peel the banana again. So we're going to pull down this way and pull down this way. Ah, now you see how much nicer it looks with that. Now do you see how they're all poofing out like that? While it's wet, we're going to tie a loose band around the bottom and that will hold it in place while it dries. I'm going to get a longer piece for this. I'm just going to wrap it around and tie it loosely in place and then after it dries we can untie that and the dry shucks will sort of stay more in the place you want them to be instead of fanning out. So I'm going to tie that a little bit tight. There we go. Now this is uneven at the bottom so I'm going to just Trim that up with the scissors and trim, trim it up. So there she is. Now, if we want her to be extra fancy, we can make some cross pieces to make her look nice. I'm going to find some shucks that are kind of on the thinner side that look like good ones. Sometimes you have shucks that are great for faces and some that are great for dresses. This one looks pretty good and it's nice and wide so I can actually make two out of that, two pieces. So I'm going to wet it. It really doesn't take long to wet the shucks, just count to five even. Shake it off a little and I'm going to tear that. This one's a little torn there. There we go. So I'm going to go to the front and I'm going to crisscross these two pieces. I'll put one over her shoulder and the other one over her other shoulder. And then again wrap and tie. This is where it really helps to have a partner with you helping you. Crisscross and pull and crisscross and pull through. There we go. So now she's got a little crisscross piece. It's almost like the top of an apron. Now, she looks funny without hair, 
so I think we should give her some hair. Her face and everything needs to dry good before we draw eyes on there. We don't want to get any water on, on here. I use a little tiny permanent marker to do a face. I can show you one that's drawn on. Here's a face that was done on one. But a lot of dolls and figures don't have faces at all. They, they left them without a face on there. So, hair. For the hair, I'm going to get some of this wool. And it's good to use that tacky glue. It's a, a extra thick kind of glue and you can glue hair on. But if you want to try tying it, I take it and put it over her face. Again, she gets everything tied on top of her in a funny way. So I'm going to tie that in place and I'll put a little more on so it covers in the back too. You'll see in a minute. Let's see. Snug it down on there so it gets attached good. It slid off her bald head. She looks funny without her hair. But that's alright. We love her anyway. Tie it tight. Alright, so I've got it tied on the back and now I'm going to pull it over the front. And do you see how she's got some hair? We will put that in place and we can make a little hat to go on top. I like to go out hiking in the woods and I pick up acorn caps. And I think she would look really lovely with a little acorn cap hat. What do you think? So that's a basic, very, very basic old style corn husk doll that somebody could have made a hundred 200 years ago and played with. It would keep you from um, being being bored, I think, if you learn to make some of these figures and then practice and use your creativity and really make them come alive. Uh, we have so much fun at the folk school. We buy these little cocktail forks, our little spears, at Party City and then they can have a sword or a lightsaber. May the force be with you. And the little more middle force too. Hopefully we'll be back next year together. But until then, have fun making and creating and test out things. You never know what you're going to make. I'd love to see some of your creations. Thank you. Well, that's fun, isn't it? Making corn husk creativity is more fun at the folk school, but this is just a real basic form that you can get started with, and I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Remember, all it takes are some corn husks, some string, a pair of scissors, and a little imagination, something to make the hair with. If you don't have a cotton ball to roll up to make the head, you can get a small uh, soft shuck wet and roll it up to go inside to form the head. You can make little babies. There's all kinds of things you can do. So have fun and enjoy your week even without being at the folk school. Enjoy a little of that folk school magic. Sing some of the songs that we love. Um, play with your family and just enjoy being together. That's a great thing about our shutdown is we do get to be with our families and the people we love. So take care and have fun. Bye.